Hey everybody, welcome, welcome back to Let's Animate, a brand new, brand spanking new episode. Disgruntled looking Mickey here, we're going to take care of him, we're going to give him exactly what's he, what he needs. I got what I need, and not in a weird way, I went upstairs and I got myself a fresh, fresh cup of coffee, just, just, just listen to this. That is hot. That is piping hot. It's fabulous. And the caffeine is hitting my bloodstream as we speak. It's a brand new mug. Clean. Fresh out of the dishwasher. And good to go. Uh, I don't normally slurp. I'm not a slurp drinker. Don't get mad at me for slurping or, or being a slurp drinker. I'm not normally a slurp drinker. I did that for effect. What effect? I don't know. Um... Off camera, apart from making coffee, um, I also went and I grabbed a couple of source um, source material pictures that I was hoping. Whoa, that's not Mickey Mouse. That I was hoping to use um, for the clapping, just more for the posture, right? So if I wanted a hand like this to to indicate the clapping, and then I also thought maybe instead of that, I think I like the second one better maybe um kind of like this if we have his hands in this kind of posture up to the side like he's holding his hands up like bravo bravo i'm thinking we're gonna go with this we're gonna try our best to go with this yeah let's try it um we gotta make a couple switch layers here um we're gonna make one for the hands and we're gonna make one for the uh shoulders and where are his hands? Hands are down here. Perfect. And the shoulders are right below that. So we'll throw the hands in the switch layer. We'll throw the shoulders in the switch layer. And we'll duplicate the hands. Hands clap. Or just clap. Sure. And we'll duplicate the shoulders. Shoulders are just clap. Clap is good. I never understood what the clap was. I know, like... In the old sitcoms and stuff, they, oh, I got the clap. Like, it's an STD or something, but what actually is it? Like, is it like a, like a, like a fungal thing? Or is it like a, like a wart thing? Or is it like a rash? Is it a, I don't know. I, I'm so fortunate to not have any knowledge, any history of STDs. Or uh, they don't even call them STDs anymore, do they? They're, are they not sexually transmitted infections now stis when i was in school like i'm talking way back in grade school now jk through grade eight they would and this was a catholic school though too so maybe not catholic catholic it was catholic but it wasn't like it, we didn't even have uniforms like there was no school uniform policy, nothing like that it was not a strict catholic it was not an elite it, where I'm from, you've got a, a public school board and you've got a separate school board, which is a Catholic school board. And I just happen to be with the Catholic school board. Um, it's just another, it's it's still totally public. Um, people can go to it, um, even if they're not Catholic. Um, I know that for a fact. And it was just, but it was a Catholic school. And they just drove home STDs. Just, and then it didn't even change when I went to high school. High school was public, it was... It's a very weird setup when you think about it. I segregated it into a separate school board, literally called the separate school. And then also when you get to high school, there's no option to go further in that school board. So you just end up in the public school board system anyway. There was really no difference between the two. Um, but in my experience, they drove home STD fear <laughs> like no one's business. Maybe I was just a naturally fearful child. I don't know. But it seemed like that was like one way you don't screw up. You don't want to screw up about about STDs was, was kind of the take-home message for me there. And then uh, going into high school, it was much the same, especially the early years of high school. They still, I s seem to think, they, they didn't really do the big presentations. Like in, in Catholic school, grade school, they would do the big presentations where you would go in to the gym, there'd be someone on the stage, and they would then start to talk to you about the dangers of STDs and the risk of AIDS. AIDS was still 
pretty big back then and it was a big concern um but um yeah so they would drill it into your head um in big groups like that and they kind of gave up the big group thing come high school by the time it was high school time but the um the message was still the same we did it it would just it would take place in like uh in phys ed now instead you know it wasn't um it was no longer the big group effort that you uh had to subject yourself to um in front of everybody so we'll just do this real quick well not real quick this could actually end up taking a fair bit of time uh we gotta figure out how we're gonna do all this this one should be easy throw this around loop things although I don't want it quite that small I should pull this up to match the size of the clapping um, yeah so I want hands to be roughly roughly this big then I'll go back to here why are all these nose and stuff there we go okay now we're kind of on a trolley of some description moving along here what are we gonna do about this I hate when we have two clear shapes it would be in the same layer, but there, like this is its own entity here, this corner of this thumb, which now leads me to try to try to figure out how I'm going to represent that in the finished product. But yeah, I have no history with with any kind of sexual related problem, um, other than kids. Am I right? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My family's great. Um, but yeah, no, so I have no idea what the clap is. Don't so don't ask me. This is not going to be information on STDs. This is not sex ed. This is not anything like that. I'm not even going to take a stance on whether or not I agree with how sex ed was taught in my day. Because um, I just don't care enough. Like it was school, you just did it because the teacher said to do it, right? Blind obedience to authority. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this country needs now more than ever. It's just blind obedience to authority, if you ask me. But nobody asked me, luckily, because that's probably like a horrible idea. Respect for authority. I, I could get on board with that. Um, yeah, I mean, does authority deserve a certain amount of base respect just because it is authority? Well, yeah. But just because you respect someone or something doesn't mean you can't disagree with them. And doesn't mean you can't forge your own path. And doesn't mean you can't be your own generation or person or all kinds of stuff. So serious time now is over. We're not going to talk about this anymore. Because this is a fun recording. This is for enjoying this lame parody that I have brewing in my brain for the last what did we decide in the last video it's been almost three years since the force awakens came out and i had this idea basically right at the same time as everyone else when everyone else when everyone else was peri parodying <laughs> satirizing and 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 mocking um the force awakens for being a uh a new hope clone His hands are a little small maybe but we can fix that after we can fix it we have the technology to fix this at a later date or just as we go along I guess is a better a better way to describe that but yeah I mean I'm all for uh, authority and respect maybe it's because I'm getting old as a, I, I worry that People aren't going to respect me, you know, <laughs> because I had a certain, even though I did have a certain level of, of respect for, because as much as that was a joke, I mean, I did, 
respect you know the authority figures that were saying these things about about sex education and um a lot of it was just you know you didn't really think about things too much because that's they were teaching you in school i mean that's what you had to learn right but now i mean it's it's a big question well when do we start sex ed and when do we do this and what do we tell them and what's the burden how do we split that burden or that distribution of responsibilities between the schools and between the uh, the parents right some parents will say keep the schools out of my edge about out of the sex education of my child and others say well it's a part of life your kids are learning so much at school anyway i should have done this ages ago <laughs> i don't need the big white blob in my face here um yeah some parents will be like, oh we don't need them in that i'll teach my kids about that myself and I mean, to me, that was a fundamental part of, of growing up was learning certain parts about sex in school, you know, with your peers in a school system where you're kind of free to ask questions, free to be a little bit silly because it's uncomfortable maybe. And in, and in being uncomfortable, you learn how you don't have to be uncomfortable, right? Because you get more accustomed to it. You get all that level of familiarity that goes a long way. And encourages education. It encourages encourages learning. And I was not prepared to have this kind of conversation. And I've got a phone call that's buzzing, and I'm debating whether or not I should take it. I'm going to hold off because we're only about nine or ten minutes out, and I will get that call later. In the meantime, we're going to continue yammering on about things that we don't know anything about. Well, no, I'm, I know about my own experience. I know about what I did and what I found valuable about taking certain courses in, in elementary school and high school. And uh, and I'm entitled to have my opinions on that, I guess. Well, not I guess. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I am. Um, so that's just the way it's going to be. But yeah, I mean, just because, you know, I mean, sex education isn't something you should be it's silly you shouldn't treat it silly but it can be silly I mean you can especially when you're not used to it right and it's it's having those discussions with your peers or in front of your peers can be hard for a lot of people I guess but it's also beneficial it gives you a kind of a safe place and that's why we go to school anyway we've already downloaded so much of the education response and I think it's a good thing so much of the education responsibilities or the responsibility for education on to other people to think that there's one or two areas where that doesn't apply now is kind of silly like you know we're teaching the teachers are teaching them more than just what's on the textbook in the textbooks just by virtue of, of, of being in that setting. They're teaching them about responsibility. They're learning about um, a, work e the wor a, a work ethic uh, of some description. And that's all necessary stuff. And it's not just the textbook. So when it comes time for uh, sex education, I don't think you see why that one thing should still be in the hands solely of... Obviously, parents play a huge role, but I don't see why the teachers have to be out of it. I don't think they do. I think it's it's good to have uh, let the kids have that area that is a little parent free. I'm all for independence and in kids. That's my big thing. Once the kids are old enough, oh yeah, this is gonna look great. We're gonna get his stuff back up where it's supposed to be. Here, his face, his pupils. Oh, his face could stay back. I think we said right. All we did was shut them off. Yeah. Uh, where's his mouth at? Why can't I see his mouth? Because it's there. There we go. And we're going to switch this to smile. And then we're going to go... And let's just start to get a look at this here. Um, clap. Yeah. So there's his hands. Ready to clap. We might make them bigger. But yeah, that's shaping up nice. He's going to pop him up. I just wonder how the transition is going to end up looking. So he's going to go from here to here instantly. In the blink of an eye. It's going to be one frame. Bam, bam. Hopefully, that comes off okay. I wonder if we should also do switch layers. 
Switch layers or bone layers for when the hands connect. When those hands hit each other to clap, do we want a switch here and then switch to closed hands? I don't know. I do not know. We can probably move this nose to one ahead of the face though. There we go. I'm going to look at the rendering here for a second. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Things are looking good there. Now, if I can find my cursor, there she is. I'm going to work on the shoulder part because the shoulder part is leaving a lot to be desired. And if we look here, here. Oh, yeah. So this is just going to kind of come down like this, I guess. And outsource material, this could take a little while. I have no doubt that I can do it, but getting it how I like could be a bit of a challenge. Pop that on a sharp point. Um, now this obviously comes to here, to here, to here, to here. This is going to stay as like a chest piece, I think. Yeah, this is going to be like this. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to peek over. Just bear with me. Mickey Mouse is just black on the top, so he's got no red there. So this all here is still going to have to be black. Uh, which could make for some interesting discoveries on his shoulder here. How would his shoulder look? Yeah, this. So his arms are going to have to end at some point. At some point, his shoulders are going to have to be, or his chest is going to have to take over. And then this will come up here. We want this in front of this arm. Yes, that's correct. Down here and here. This in here, this in here. Give him a bit of an elbow. Bring this crease here down sharper. Yep, yep, yep. This comes over. This is here. This is here. Lots and lots of refactoring. There we go. He's got a chest piece here, which is going to be actually exactly at the back. Those are from the hands layer. We'll have to tidy those up. Uh, now, are these his jumpsuit? This is his jumpsuit layer. So we're going to have to fix this. These are his pants. These exist right up here like this. Straight across, basically. Yep. Okay. Now his shoulders in the clap layer will have a very distinct body-like shape. Here and here. Pop that there. Yep, yep, yep. This is all going according to plan. Or so I tell myself. That's his shoulder there, so we can... There's his body. This is These are going to distract me to no end, so let's get rid of these lines. We can duplicate these lines later. Much, much later. And then we pull his shoulder clap. Uh, let his face have room to breathe here. Face have room to breathe. That looks good. Check the rendering. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Uh, what what does it need? What is it missing? What's what's lacking here? It's lacking a little bit of depth around this arm. Give him just a little bit more like that, like that, 
Hmm. Not bad. Not not great. Not bad. And you can see now why I I rely on on source material a lot because I just just positioning all this stuff has nothing to do with the job I'm trying to do. What I want to do. And I don't want to be an animator. I want to make funny observations, and um, and the artistic stuff, the lack of artistic talent just slows me down. I, uh, so I just I, I resort to the crutches, um, just so that I can get what I want done done sooner. Um, I don't really have much of a problem with it, but I could see how it could come across as uh, as lazy or as uh, in worst case scenario, plagiaristic, but uh, it's not my intent. Uh, I'm fully aware of that that's not bad. I mean, you get the point, right? Now, if we need another, so that was the shoulders, that was the hands. We should do this and then double it and do a clap impact. And really, everything would be the same for the shoulders it would just be the hands that end up much more together this would hide completely this would come up like this uh, yeah all these were done independently that was an oversight in a way all be connected but just to close that gap a little bit close that gap a little bit we'll do that that's good and we'll go to shoulders I was gonna not do this but I will double this one again and I'll do impact and then we'll just just ever so slightly correct this stuff here uh, that's um yeah this can come in doesn't need to be there. Same with here. This doesn't need to be here. Uh, hands clap and clap should line up. Looks good. That looks good. Impact and impact and impact. Yeah, there we go. Is that right? Oh no, these have come in ahead of this. Um, so hands, impact, we want these lines to be buried, oh not buried, but buried behind that hand. These should not be sticking up. And it's not quite right. Um, hmm, they almost do kind of meet need like a flat sort of impact line here like this hand would have to be let's just save this here save um, and um, start messing around with this if we can start pulling this line in to make like a much more a much flatter uh, frame of reference here this line could come up Right, as if this hand is actually on the outside of this hand. So, yeah, so what we would need to do then is put a point here and here, and then we'll just go in and hide these to make this hand, no, this one hide, and this one exposed, to make that look like this finger here is over top of this hand here a little bit, and then. Um, so should be pulling these in to make it look much more solid. We don't really need all these points, do we? It's just cluttering everything up, making everything look kind of janky. This will be a commentary-free episode. This is... Uh, I'm going to take a sip of coffee, though. Bear with me. This is more for getting a much more technical appearance on this, uh, which obviously is, as I've said for the umpteenth time, is just not my uh, 
not by strong point. Um, you know, we could make this look much more like the hand is in here. Right, yeah, that looks not bad, I think. Let's um let's run through some basic animations here. We don't need to save anymore. We'll go we're at the beginning. We want these as hands and we want these as shoulders. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Um and we want his um his disinterested, okay? Abrams has just come in. Mickey's already heard enough from these bonehead yes men that he's got. He's really losing it. He sees Abrams trace over the opening crawl from A New Hope. All the yes men are uncertain. There's murmuring. There's uncertainty in the room. It's palpable in the boardroom. You could cut it with a knife. Cut to Mickey sitting here. Disinterested face. He's just witnessed everything the viewer has just witnessed. He switches. We might end up having that grow. We'll switch it to that mouth layer. It'll start small and grow. For now, he starts to smile. He starts to smile, and a couple of seconds later, he goes to a clap position. He goes to a clap position. All on the same frame. Then, he impacts his clap. Then he goes back to a clap position. Yeah, clap position. Then he impacts his clap. I could have just done this the other way. And then we'll cycle back to 30 now. That should be fine, right? What do we see? Yeah, it's good. Gets the message across, right? Your brain is doing the rest of the work. Our spacing here, everything's a little bit off in terms of how uh, how everything is aligned. Oh, and his shoulders didn't go back to 30. Right, and how our timing is like it, we're, we're going to have a slow clap. So he's going to start and you're, we'll be able to measure out each individual clap until finally it's just, you know, clap, clap, clap. And then you get the rejoicing of all the Yes Men boardroom. Anyway, we've gone on for 27 minutes now. It wasn't the most entertaining. I apologize, but we got, you know, some work done and, and I got some work done, which is is the most important um, forward progress. His hands got a little small, but. I think we're going to live with that. And until next time, thanks very much. See you soon.